my name is Nancy Nolan Jones. Today is December the 7th, 2019. We are here today to interview Olga Ramey and Oliver for the Reflections of Black Life in Cleveland Oral History Collection. Olga Ramey, thank you so much for agreeing to share this interview with us. We're looking forward to hearing about your life story and how you've been working throughout the community and we'd like to start with a little family history background mm -hmm. and if you could first tell us your full name, date of birth, where you were born and then we'll go from there. Well my birth name was Anne Marie Holloway so my maiden name is Holloway. Mm -hmm. uh, I have an African name, Ola Ramey which was given to me uh, 30 years ago. And I also have a day name that was given to me uh, 10 years ago through my rites of passage. So that's Ola Ramey, Akua, and Oliver. Oliver being my ma married name. Uh -huh. So you said the day name? Mm -hmm. So I went through a rites of passage in Ghana and uh, so my day name reflects that I was born on a Wednesday and that Akua. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I understand what day means. Mm -hmm. that, that day is Literally. Literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So you were born where? I was born here in Cleveland, Ohio, Mount okay. Pleasant neighborhood. And, what, and when's in your birthday? June 11th, 1952. 1952. Uh -huh. And tell me Uh, when I was born, they were living in Mount Pleasant. They had just moved from Althwaite Homes. Mm -hmm. So all my siblings were born in Althwaite Homes. My uh, father was in the Navy, and he served during World War II. Uh, he was a boatswain cook in the Navy, mm -hmm. but he had to uh, disarm live ammunition during uh, that war because the white sailors wouldn't do it. Wow. And of course, they, well, they basically forced the, the black uh, Navy, uh, you know, Navy men <laughs> mm -hmm. to do that sailors. work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to the sailors to do that work. So, so. They, your dad must have been pretty good because he's still around. I mean, he, he's, he survived that. He survived it. He never talked about it until one day we were watching a movie and he said I did that and that's when I asked him about it he had never talked about it and this was he was probably uh, 80 years old when he told me how did he how did he express it with regret or something that had been deep-seated to me it felt like a I don't know maybe these are my feelings but it seemed like sadness. Uh, it felt like sadness. Uh, there was something attached to it that he wouldn't, ha that he had not talked about right. for so many years. Right. I really feel like it was a, a, a way of protecting us from these ugly things. And uh, so he didn't, he didn't tell us those ugly things. Let's talk about your dad a little bit, your dad and your mother, mm -hmm. um, maybe even your grandparents. You're, tell me about your family background. Uh, your dad was born here? Or? He was born uh, here, but he was raised in Napoleon, Ohio by his grandfather and grandmother who had been slaves. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Uh, that's all I really know except that my uh, great-grandfather was named, he was a healer. And when he died, they called him uh, Dr. Valentine. My sister has the metal uh, newspaper print plates. And uh, they said Dr. Valentine. So he, well that, at that time, you know, they did leeches and, <laughs> you know, herbs. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and his name was? Uh, William Valentine. William Valentine. Mm -hmm. And he was a slave. And which, what were we talking about? Uh, in, North Carolina, and he left North Carolina. And see that now I'm going to have to correct myself. 
It wasn't Va Valentine. Valentine was my grandmother's maiden name. Okay. Um, but he was, I don't know what part of North Carolina. I just know that they, uh, he had like eight or nine brothers. Mm -hmm. And we don't know, uh, you know, the, a lot of the family, you know, so. And then you, and so his name was then? William. William, but mm -hmm. you didn't know a last name for him? Mm -mm. Well, I'm assuming it was Holloway, but, you know. Okay. Yeah. And then your grandmother mm -hmm. was named? Valentine. Uh -huh. What was her first name? Bertha. Bertha. Mm -hmm. Did they meet in North Carolina? No, because he ran away from a plantation in North Carolina and settled in uh, Napoleon, Ohio. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, I don't know how they met. Mm -hmm. and, but you do know that he was a healer. Did mm -hmm. you, do you know anything about your grandmother? Uh, my grandmother, and my great, it was my great grandfather who was the healer. Okay. Yeah, my grandfather, uh, I don't know what kind of work he did, or I just know that, uh, um, you know, that he had helped raise my father. For, for whatever reason, he, my father was the only of his siblings who was sent there to live. And um, he, so he was raised in this, uh, by an ex-slave, you know. Um, I think it helped to develop his, his uh, sense of character in a way. He, he, he's very solid, uh, really determined and uh, kind of made sure his family was kept intact. Mm -hmm. uh, he saw the importance of family. He mm -hmm. learned that from his father. Mm -hmm. His father was Valentine. His father was uh, William Holloway. And, and his father was? His father was, and his grandfather was also uh, William. Mm -hmm. But so Valentine was on the mom on my grandmother's side of the family. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm sorry because, you know, it's like our history is not uh, written in a one place. Right. And so I'm kind of remembering from conversations and. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if we get this right, your, your great grandfather was, was the slave. Right. And his name was William. Mm -hmm. And he lived in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. and then he he ran, ran away. And he ran away to Napoleon, Ohio. And that's where he birthed his son, mm -hmm. who was named William. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's also where he, my great-grandfather, was uh, known as a healer. So that's where we, have, the, uh -huh, we have those metal plates that were in the, the Napoleon newspaper. was probably only a couple black families in that town. Mm -hmm. He was you know, called doctor. Wow. You know. How about your great-grandmother? Uh, I don't know much about her. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then moving up a generation, how about your grandmother? Yeah, my grandmother uh, lived briefly with us in Mount Pleasant. And well, in fact, she lived in that house before we moved in. And she and my grandfather uh, kind of acted like they owned the house, but really a Jewish family owned the house. Mm -hmm. And so when my father, uh, got his GI Bill, he used it to purchase the house. Nice. So then they were living together. And at some point, my grandfather died soon after I was born, like really months. What was your grandmother's name? Her name was Bertha. Bertha Holloway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bertha Holloway, okay. So Bertha carried on the continued family. Where, where do you, um, so, so your father was one of how many siblings? Uh, six. Six. Mm -hmm. He was one of six. Mm -hmm. And then, so he was uh, born here. here in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And he met your mother? Right, who had come up from Indian, Indian, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Right. Mm -hmm. she, was very, she was born in Indianapolis. She was born in Tennessee. Uh -huh. Her parents died. She lived with an aunt for a while, then uh, she went to live with another aunt in, in Indianapolis. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
and then she came to Ohio. Uh -huh. Do you know right. the reason? Or? Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm not really sure. Okay. You know. But then at some point, Bertha and William got together, and they were parents of how many children? Uh, let's see. I have, I think it was six, f seven children altogether, I think. Uh, and I, one, uh, one daughter and, uh, at least five sons. So that's six. These are your siblings, though, right? Bertha and William, or I need to come up one more time. Okay, you need to come up, because okay. my parents are, it's so Agnes. your grandparents. Right. Okay. And your mother. My mother is Agnes. Maxwell Holloway. Maxwell is her maiden name. Okay. And my father's John uh, F. Holloway and uh, Senior. Senior. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I so my I mother had one sibling uh -huh. and my father had, I think, five, five. Okay. siblings. I think I'm caught up now. Yeah. And th for those that are doing the yeah. genealogy, I, I think they'll be able to follow that. Mm -hmm. And so um, they are, your mom, tell me once again, she came from? From uh, uh, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. Yeah. By, and your, yeah. And your dad was already here. Right. Okay. And they got together. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about your parents then. Were they um, very involved in the community? Always. Um, he, my father, uh, I don't know his whole hi work history, mm -hmm. uh, but he was like a messenger for some company. And uh, my mother did day work. Mm -hmm. Then he got a job at the post office. And uh, that was quite an important thing to do. Exactly. In those days. Exactly. That was a big. That was a big deal. <laughs> that was a big deal. What was his position with the post office? I, I know when he passed away, he was a he was supervisor. So a lot of people knew him. When he, they, a lot of uh, younger postal workers came to his funeral, you know, because they said he was uh, he helped them to keep their jobs at the post office. Nice. So, yeah, and then they were active in the even in the. Uh, Kwanzaa community, so mm. they were always elders at a lot of the events, and right. So, nice. my mother uh, signed uh, the petition to uh, for the what is it, the Black Star Line, or the Garvey. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <Wow. laughs> yeah. So that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So they were very conscious people. Mm -hmm and active in the Kwanzaa. So the Kwanzaa community really was relatively new in the early 60s it started, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was started to give me just a little bit of history so we'll see how they were connected mm -hmm. to that. It was started to give us a sense of, of... I think they became more involved as, my, as I had children. Oh, okay. You know, uh, because I was involved in the community right. and um, but they were I mean they were always involved in the community but not so much uh, later. yeah tell me tell me where did, um, did your mother work my mother did day work for until I was in I think middle school mm -hmm. and then she was a, a library assistant for Cleveland Public School nice. mm -hmm. so what, what are some of what's what's probably one of the most indelible memories that you have of growing up with these two parents. Um, how many siblings do you have? I have uh, through, uh, two living, mm -hmm. and I had four. Yeah, you know, my brother is deceased, my oldest brother. So growing up in that house in Mount Pleasant, mm -hmm. um, did your parents go to church? Uh, they were active members at Core United Methodist Church. And who was the disciplinarian in the family? Uh, they did in different ways. Psychologically, my dad. <laughs> but uh, with the ruler, <laughs> my mother. Your mother. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but that's because he worked nights. Mm -hmm. So he physically wasn't there as like she was. Mm -hmm. She was there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I came home. I remember 
in elementary school coming home from school for lunch, you know. So I was always getting uh, reinforced mm -hmm. with what expectations. So the, the foundation of the home and coming from a two-parent home, can you speak to that? Uh, my parents always worked together in terms of uh, what they wanted for us. And, um, and even though my mother did, uh, was doing day work, she's, they sent my oldest brother to college. And once he went to college, then it, the expectation was that the rest of us would go. Mm -hmm. You know, so he kind of, that set the foundation mm -hmm. right. in terms of expectation. So they wanted more for their children to have more than what they were able to achieve. Right. Did your parents go to school here? Uh, my father went to Central High School. Mm -hmm. It was Central High School. Mm -hmm. um, my mother, no, she went to, she graduated from Christmas Addicts High School in Indianapolis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that, that sounds like um, a really solid family background. Mm -hmm. and, and it's one that's needed mm -hmm. to try to um, keep the family unit Mm -hmm. tight. Mm -hmm. Would you say, can you expound on that a little bit, the importance of the family unit? Well, I, um, as you experienced. Yeah, I think it was, it was crucial because uh, e the funds were limited, even though the post office, when he got the job at the post office, that was, you know, that was considered a black middle class kind of job. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and even though my mother was still doing day work uh, when my when my brother went off to college he went off to college really because somebody at the church said uh, you know well he needs to go to college and to a HBCU it was Philander Smith mm -hmm. and uh, even though they at that point didn't really have that uh, solidly in place they didn't know how they could make it happen somebody at the church help him get a scholarship you know so uh, that kind of got the ball rolling but but it was really that that whole uh, that whole uh, linkage between the church you know and the community and you know the family you know you know they, they were all on the same accord in terms of so pushing. community you you, you realize that the community around you has a lot to do with how you are shaped in those days. Oh yeah. And neighbors that were um, probably in some kind of way looked after you. Oh yes. And oh yes. There's a house next door to my house now because I'm still in the family house. And they just tore it down maybe about a month ago. And I, I worked at the voting polls. So that morning I left, the house was there. That night when I came home, the house was gone and I cried. And it just was sudden because it just felt like part of my history, you know, was gone. Because the, the family that lived there, when I was in college, they came to see me in, when I was in college. They called me their little girl, <laughs> you know. They didn't have any children. Okay. Uh huh. And uh, he was, uh, he belonged to, he was a black Muslim. And so he, uh, they would read the final call out loud. She was deaf. <laughs> so we could hear him reading the newspaper or they would read the newspaper together. And uh, it was just, you know, just Very felt important. part, a daily part of my life. Um, so, and then my godmother lived across the street. And they, you know, and I just knew everybody in the neighborhood. And I, and they knew me. If I veered off, <laughs> if I came home from school on a different street, my mother got a phone call. Well, I saw Ann on 147th, you know. Right. Ann, I got in trouble. Because right. I was supposed to come home a certain way. Right. So people would know, they'd know where you were. You know, I think that's thank you for sharing that because 
I think that's an important thing for current and future generations to hear that we had certain standards that, and why those standards were in place. It was for the protection. We hear a lot on the news about people getting abducted nowadays. And um, I think that if we had the, the foundation of the community intact, right. like it yeah. was in the past, mm -hmm. where neighbors knew neighbors yeah. and looked after, right. and parents gave specific guidelines for behavior, mm -hmm. then right. it leaves less opportunity for things that aren't so pleasant to right, think exactly. about happening. Right. Yeah. Right. That, that, it provided a certain level of safety. Yes. You know, uh, so. And you, security. Yeah. You felt secure. Right. I never felt. Uh, I always felt like I always felt this is my neighborhood. These people in this neighborhood know me. They know my parents. If I cut up over here, <laughs> there will be consequences. And that's another thing. There are consequences, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> right. There were consequences. And what might those be? What types of? How did your parents punish me? Uh -huh. Um. Well, there was the occasional whipping, <laughs> you know. My mother did that. Mm -hmm. uh, my father would make you uh, kind of guilt you, you know. Right. You kind of let him down. Yeah. Uh, I think the one time he raised his hand to me, he really didn't even hit me. And I had something, I had run my mouth, and he went to smack me. And he didn't even, he just brushed my lips. But you would have thought he took a whip to me. You know, that he even raised his hand was just devastating, yeah. devastating, yeah. you know. But, uh, and my mom, well, you know, she was mom. She's right there all the time yeah. seeing everything. Right. So, uh, so they actually provided this a good balance, I, I believe. Yeah, and thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Because mm -hmm. we, we just kind of need to frame who you are mm -hmm. and whose shoulders you stand on. Right. So that your children and great grandchildren will be able to understand from whence they've come. That's right. And what the community was like at that time. 